Well, January is Braille Literacy Month, and the American Printing House for the Blind right here based in Louisville, Kentucky, is making sure that those that are visually impaired have the resources that they need. And their museum is also offering visitors a chance to learn a little bit more about the history of trailblazers in that space. Today, I'm joined by product manager Joe Hodge and museum director Michael Hudson. Guys, it's so great to have you here. Thanks great for to having us. You know, happy Braille Month. Yes. And yes. I'm so happy we get to talk about this because we do have this amazing resource, the American Printing House for the Blind, right here in Louisville and I mean it is I mean talk about like in the space why it's such a big deal well I mean think about walking into a library full of books full of information and none of it is available or accessible for mm -hmm. you and that was the case before Louis Braille comes along this little kid 12 year old boy has lost his vision in an accident and um, gets to go to the only school for the blind anywhere in the world. And there he is exposed to this, this kind of clunky dot code that somebody else has come up with, a guy named Charles Barbier. And, and over the next three years, Louis kind of simplifies that code down to the perfect little six dot cell that we still use today. And in so doing, makes, a, makes it possible for you to read anything that we, we have mm. in print is available in Braille now. And the yep. technology for me is just mind blowing to really kind of to get my head around. And Joe, you're uh, a product manager um, and you've brought a Braille device today. Uh, talk about like the technology that you have and how it keeps evolving and changing probably every single year. Yeah, so this is our newest innovation called the Mantis Q40. And so as Mike was kind of saying, you know, walking into a library, uh, when I was a kid, um, there were so many inaccessible books for me. Uh, there was a lot of print books that I wanted to read weren't available through audio or through Braille. Mm -hmm. uh, this device here, you can connect to the internet and you can download any book you want. And it's amazing. I mean, everything is at my fingertips literally now. Oh, wow. uh, so this is 40 characters. It has, it can connect up to five devices. So you can connect to your cell phone, your computer. And basically it uses electronic pins that pop up and emulate the braille cell. And when I read it, it you know feels a lot like paper braille. It's not, not quite the same, but, but still pretty good. Right. Um, and the, the, so this is 40 characters. So literally 40 letters per se at a time that I can read. The idea and the innovation is hopefully to one day have a whole page of braille um, you know, at my fingertips. Like when the technology uh, comes out, because we know you guys are always behind developing in new technology, probably every month, every year, and, and things kind of in line. What do you look at? I mean, Joe, you bring up a great point. You would like this to change. You would like that to change. Where, where would you like it to go in the future? I'm hoping to see a, a, a tablet device where you can have Braille and even tactile graphics on one device for a student. Yes, so, yes. you know, time, you know, when you get a book now from well, Braille. I didn't think about that. When you have a book, you're not able to feel there, there's not Braille, obviously, on the picture, so the graphics are not accessible to you. Right, they have to they have to label them, and and the time it takes to get from the Braille printer to the the student's desk mm -hmm. is around six months. So it, if the, if it gets ordered a little late, uh, we're we're wanting to cut down on that time. So with a you know possible with a future device, they could get it within seconds, which Isn't would be that awesome. Amazing, that would be. And awesome. a chemistry book might might take forty volumes. Uh, yes. I mean, you couldn't carry it around, you know. And, but with the devices that we're working on now, all all of that will be right there in your a hands. library within your hands yes. right and even like take us through uh, what is it like to sit in let's say we all have like meetings we're all back at work after the holidays say you're sitting in a meeting and there's a presentation that's being shown then those are devices too that you have there that you're able to follow along and be a part of that active discussion yeah that you want to make sure that all the documents that you're using yeah. in your work life are all accessible yes and Joe, that's what you're experiencing too? Yes, so a lot of times they'll, they'll send an email out with the meeting notes or any kind of uh, pictures that they're gonna be showing or, or PowerPoints. And one good practice to do for that is to create what's called alt text. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna send an image, you can right click on an image, you can add alt text to that. Alt text should be about 40 characters, like a t or I'm sorry, 140 characters, like a tweet. Um, and you would just put in a little description there for someone who's blind or visually impaired to, to read that. Yeah, make sure that we're including, well, I think when we hit send and when we have um, documents that we're sending out, we make sure that it's accessible 
to absolutely everybody. So you are the museum director. I think that's another thing that I'm, hi, I'm waking up everybody to realize, yes, <laughs> there is a massive museum over at American Printing House for the Blind. Uh, and I think that this is a great month. If you've never been there, it is an amazing hidden treasure. Um, tell us about some of the, the collections and the uh, exhibits that are there. Sure, so you know, we can, can kind of start with Louis Braille, but um, you know, how do you teach math? How do you teach science? Um, how do you get around? You know, uh, you might see somebody with a, Joe's using a white cane today, but you might see somebody with a dog guide. What's the history behind that? Exactly. Right, these are all innovations that parents and teachers and students work together to kind of figure out how do we get around this obstacle that we call blindness and do whatever we want to do. And understand kind of the, the strides that have been made and, and pay tribute, I think, in the museum too to the many people that have made these discoveries and have, yeah. have made uh, so many things accessible. Didn't you all, all just receive a, um, a large archive, a Helen Keller we archive did. as well. We did. That's so, kind of a big you know, deal. Helen Keller is probably the most well-known person who was blind. She was actually deafblind in the world, right? And 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 so we actually have her entire life history. Her, wow. All of her stuff is at the American Printing House now. And so yeah. we're working on a new museum. I know you are. Yeah. I'm, I'm reminding people to go see it now before <laughs> renovations start this summer. Yeah, we're going to close yeah. this summer. And, and then we're working on this new museum. It's going to include the Keller story. It's going to include APH and innovation. But it's also going to, we're going to redefine the way we're telling the story and really introduce people to the way people who are blind or low vision live their lives. Yeah. Because most sighted people have no idea how, you know, Joe gets up in the morning and puts his pants on one leg at a time. Right? You do put your Usually. Well, Usually. I hope yeah. so, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just ordinary people doing ordinary things. Aww. And uh, yeah, we're going to we're gonna uh, demystify all that. I love that. All right, Michael, Joe, thank you all so much for coming on, especially showing us um, a little bit more about Braille and what we can all do, I think, to communicate it in a more inclusive way. Thank you. Thank so you. So for more information, I mean, please get out to the museum while you can before they start that renovation. Um, it, it's really an amazing place. So for more information, uh, just head on over to APH.org.